one oh. This one hit well in the air out toward right center field. Kepler's on the move. He looks up and that is out of here. Another home run for Jose Abreu. His third of the series. A two-run blast out to right center field. And in the fourth, the Astros lead the Twins 3-1. to one. Uh. You heard that call right here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5 yesterday. Seven straight ALCS appearances for your Houston Astros. A round of applause, everybody. Unless you're driving your car, don't take your hands off the wheel. Honk your car horn. Honk in front of the honk with that person right in front of you. You know, tailgate a little bit. I'm kidding. Don't do any of those <laughs> That's things. So much worse than just clapping. Yeah, you'll get shot. You'll you'll or get run off the road like I was almost that one time in the Galleria. But hey, it's as close to a dynasty as it gets. I, I'm a little uncomfortable putting the D word out there because I feel like you need a third title. I say that as someone who followed the New England Patriots when they had their first dynasty, they won three and four. When they had their second dynasty, they won three and five. Now, the amount of years that it's done over where they have made it to seven straight ALCS, I, I get that that kind of impacts it a little bit, but I think the thing you do have to remember in baseball, it's been a really long time since we've te- seen a team repeat. Obviously, it's been the same thing in football too, but I, I think you got to have that third one to to give that dynasty a capital D, you know, to put that D in there. Yeah, to the really big just D. Re- slam it on the table. Oh, uh, yeah, just plop it right down. I, yeah, I, I tend to agree. That, that veiny D. What? I tend to agree that, uh, <laughs> Girthy. that you need the third. You need the third. Uh, a to third get, D? To get the D. Uh, <laughs> to get the big D. The real big D. We're really mature. We're journalists here. And we're just talking about that big dynasty D. The one that it's, it's big. In Minute Maid Park. Firm big D to put everyone at the front of the dynasty. Every once in a while they take down the roof so you can see the big D. Uh, yes. Yeah. Right un- there, un- Minute un- Maid Park. That roof. Yeah. Well, let's just air it out. For all the world to see. You do need to win three, and there is a little bit of the kind of like you need the same core too, and I think I think this team has pretty much the same principle. You know, the three big guys from the first one are still kind of uh, here mm-hmm. with Bregman, Altuve, Verlander. Mm-hmm. It's just you know that's it. That's that's all of them. That's all of them that are still here. Shout to Lance McCullers. We'll get to Lance McCullers in a moment because he actually got a shout out from some of the players last night, but I, I think it's great to start with Verlander, Sean, and Verlander gave that awesome speech. L- let's play it again in case you missed it. This was right after the Fox broadcast, I guess, cut away from the post-game show inside the Astros clubhouse as they were about to pop some bottles. Who gonna do the celebration? Who wanna do the celebration? Me! Yeah! No, 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 no. I'm doing the World Series. You do this. <laughs> Seasons, you know, nothing went our way early. We battled through injuries. Yeah. We grinded. I wasn't even <laughs> here. <laughs> I was happy to be back. Yeah. The seventh time. Seventh time. All right. Don't take that for granted. On seven. Everybody pop these motherfuckers. <laughs> awesome that they counted to seven and it's great that Verlander's back for this it would have felt a little weird and they needed him to get back to this spot he's going to be starting game one on Sunday for the Astros too as announced by Dusty Baker um, before yesterday's game Dusty Baker interestingly enough said we want to win here I'm not going to announce the game five starter yet we want to win this one here but Verlander would start Sunday in game 1 of the ALCS. Also awesome that along the way there, did you hear Dusty say that no, I'm going to wait until the World Series to give my speech. F yeah. That is the confidence that you want out of a uh right now lowercase d dynasty. Yeah, uppercase on Dusty, lowercase on the dynasty. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I I do love that that is like one I feel like 
because of Fox Sports' decision to go live to a post game press conference or a post game uh, locker room celebration speech, which been, went about as <laughs> what you thought that mm-hmm. it, that it would. Uh, I feel like Verlander's speech is getting a lot of it, but I, I do appreciate Dusty, uh, the little moment where they go, who's going to give the speech? Who's going to give the speech? I imagine he's pointing to Bregman. He's pointing to Altuve. He's pointing to uh, Maldonado. He's pointing to Justin Verlander. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he says that he's doing the World Series one. Dusty Baker makes me happy. What can I say? And it's great to have Verlander back. You can see why, like, everyone talks about how much players love playing for Dusty Baker and how every announcer goes, if you're a player, you love playing for managers like Dusty Baker. Right. If, if, If you're someone who just watches the games and doesn't pay attention to the lineup before the game. You're gonna love Dusty Baker. Yeah, just, just don't pay attention to the lineup. There's no, there's nothing that's going to be good before a game. Focusing on that, I think Jeremy Branham is the best Twitter follow at our station. Seriously, I, I I think that Jeremy does a great job on Twitter. But Jeremy with the lineup stuff every single day, I gotta say, like I I I, I feel like it's wasted energy, man. He does do it every. He does do it when they're like the perfect lineup. So he right. it, he keeps that same energy. It's a good. It's a it's a good bit. Yes, it's a good bit, but it's it's just wasted energy. It really is. Just just enjoy the man and enjoy the lowercase dynasty. And here are some Astros players talking about what has allowed for this to continue in an article written by our friend Chandler Rome. Said Verlander, quote, there's been a culture established here that hasn't faded away. It's still very present, and that's a testament to the guys that were here before and the guys that remain here and the guys that are leaders of this ball club. One of those guys you saw in the other dugout for the Minnesota Twins, there is a part of me, and you guys know that I like Carlos Correa a lot. I I suppose it is a mixed bag for whatever reason because he chased the bag to go to Minnesota, but it bummed me out to see Carlos Correa from just a Carlos Correa perspective, not an Astros perspective, I'm very thankful he did not face Ryan, who gave us a Stresley inning, Ryan Presley there. I'm very happy about that. But to see him in the on-deck circle watching as this team continues to do what it does, bummed me out just a, a little bit 30 minutes later when I saw the replay of it. But anyway, back to Verlander. They don't allow slacking off, but they do it in a respectful manner. They expect the best of everyone because they're giving their best every single day. What a great way to lead by example. Continued Verlander. I think our culture is something not tangible. Funny that one of the most analytic forward teams in baseball, something that makes this team so special, is something that's not measurable. And that has been the case for a really long time. I'm not going to act like I know the ins and outs of every single baseball clubhouse, but I think it's pretty fair to generalize that in a sport that has as many international players as it does, that a lot of these clubhouses are, by nature, a little bit segregated. And that is not the case here. And and you'll notice, too, like the Astros have a lot of players who, at the very least at press conferences, need a translator. It doesn't mean that they don't have a grasp of, of English. I'm sure they have some. And... The interesting thing is that some of the American players on the Ash shows, it feels like they're making the effort to learn Spanish. Alex Bregman in particular. And there is a unity in this clubhouse that in in spite of the many international differences in it, it really does feel like they all get along with each other. And that does go somewhere. It does. It's a stupid, intangible, sure, it's cliches, it's Hallmark BS, but... This team has always been close. And when you got a guy that's running the show that everybody likes, I mean, it helps out. And I know a lot of you, and God, I, I'm, I'm sorry to keep going back to defending Dusty, but any manager who comes in here, like it's such a great pl- situation that you just need to have somebody that's not going to be a hard-o or a hard-ass. Dusty's perfect for a clubhouse that essentially self-polices. Said Dusty about... The Astros in this run they're on. There are times when you just have to rely on faith and rely on a guy's background. I was taught that water seeks its own level. That's why you see the faith with, say last year, Yuli Gurriel. There are a lot of you that did not want Yuli Gurriel to play down the stretch. A lot of you guys wanted to see Trey Mancini play. Dusty stuck with Yuli, who had his worst year. After one of his, after, check that, after his actual best year. What, gold glove in the batting title? Yuli did not play well. Dusty stuck with them. 
Dusty stuck with Jose Abreu. And, and you could say, you know, it's unconventional, it's dumb. But, you know, as Jeff Backwell said, eventually the back of the baseball card ended up right. Sorry, Jeff. And that was a great move. It was a move that I thought would be great in the moment. Obviously, it took a couple of months to get there. More quotes uh, to the Ryan Presley one that we mentioned a little bit ago. Top to bottom, going from Breggy to Jose to Lance McCullers to Justin Verlander. It's just the mentality that they have. I don't think a lot of people quite understand that until you're in the clubhouse and you see it. The camaraderie, echoing what Verlander says, Ryan Presley, that we have in there picking each other up day in and day out is something that we strive for. Hell, we even got Dana Brown. I wonder how Dana Brown feels. Because I imagine Dana Brown, he's new general manager. And you know how I've framed him. He does come off as a politician a lot, specifically when he's talking about potential moves. Does feel like he is promising without actually delivering. But there have been moments this year where it's pretty clear that Dana Brown and Dusty Baker disagree on things. Does that mean that Dana's going to be out of a job or Dusty's going to be out of a job? I, I suppose we will wait and see. But what Dana said is the stuff that you hear from Dusty here. Quote, there's nothing better than experience. We have experienced guys in the postseason. <laughs> yeah, Dusty Baker knows that. These guys have been here, <clears throat> have been here before, have the heartbeat for this, and at the end of the day, they got the job done. Everyone's in lockstep right now. It's funny what a couple of playoff games will do after you have an absolutely terrible month of September to wrap up the year and barely end up winning the division. But here we are, and I mean, how do you not feel extremely confident in the Houston Astros going forward in a playoff round where the Atlanta Braves are down two games to one on the road in Philadelphia tonight? The Dodgers were swept. The Orioles were swept. In a series, in a, in a season like that, here the Astros are, yet again, doing the exact same thing that they've been doing for nearly a decade. It's incredible. I love covering this team. You should love watching this team. Don't take any moment for granted. Truly. Oh, man, I'm choking on coffee. Yeah, you're getting so choked up reading this uh It sounds like piece. I'm choked up. I'm literally choking on coffee. Yeah, they just made the ALCS, Paul. Save some save some for later. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to get some water uh, and rinse out the coffee grounds. Did you ever drink a sip of coffee and it's just all coffee grounds? Like I essentially just drank coffee mud. Uh, so you just had just raw coffee, just yeah. pure. Yeah, it wasn't great. 